Right, it's just the dream team this week, Ben and JG. We're doing it on our own because there's some big news out. The US Open's going ahead. There's a few players that are disgruntled that there's not going to be any qualifying for the competition. Federer's out. Will Nadal and Djokovic be out too? Serena Williams has said that she's going to play. Is this another opportunity, though, for all the other players to come through and finally win a Grand Slam? So what do you make of it all? <laughs> it's, the US Open is now apparently going ahead. Controversially as well, like, it's crazy. There's been so much happened in the tennis world uh, in the last few days. Obviously, it all sort of started winding back to this uh, phone call they had on Zoom with like 400 players. Um, they were discussing whether people would want to actually play in it. And to be honest, the consensus from this call seemed to be that players don't actually want to go. And the majority aren't too keen on the event going ahead. For a start, you've got all the quarantine stuff. So once you get there, it's under strict conditions. Like you have it's two weeks of quarantine. You've got the one, one uh, member of your team only allowed to come with you. Yeah. Ranking points, what's going to happen with that? Can they, can they allow for ranking points? I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to, right? Yeah. Ranking points should be on offer. Yeah, but then again, and that's... At the end of the day, it's an asterisk grand slam. There's going to be no fans there. It's going to be a slam. What's always going to go down in history is a bit of a... Mm, well, a lot this... of players weren't sure about it. Well, I think it sorts the men from the boys, really, or the women from the girls in this type of competition because it's just sort of everyone's in the same situation together. I don't think anybody has an upper hand in this sort of situation. It means everyone's on sort of a level playing field for a change. You've got Djokovic now will only be able to have one coach or one trainer rather than a whole team of people. He can go up against somebody 100 in the world who has the, normally only has one person. So everybody, there's a sort of level playing field, which I quite like about the whole thing. Uh, obviously, it's causing a bit of controversy because there's no people allowed to qualify for the event, which I think... And well, the doubles has been cut to like 24. Well, yeah, exactly. I think the, the whole qualifying thing, though, is something that annoys both of us as we both know there's quite a lot of amazing hardcore players out there that are ranked outside probably the top 150 or something that we would have quite liked to have seen have a chance to get in there. And you never know if, if they are big players are going to start dropping out. Who knows? You could have had some big shock winner, like 200 in the world or something. Yeah, I'm just looking from the financial perspective as well, though. Like, at the end of the day, we, we've been massive advocates of this on our podcast. We want to support some of these lower-ranked players, give them the promotion. A lot of them literally have... They survive off the Grand Slams. They get paid more money like a, for a qualifying Grand Slam than winning a, a, a smaller challenger. Yeah. So for them, they rely on this heavily. So to be taking that away from there's so many players who are going to lose out on this. Like um, a player we've had on the podcast before, Bibian Schoofs, she, she wrote a tweet that illustrates it quite well, actually. I don't know if you can get it on the screen. Yeah. She was saying that there's going to be a hundred, usually there's 128 qualifiers for the men and 128 for the women. So that's instantly 256 players who are going to miss out on not being able to play. The doubles draw has been reduced to 24 instead of 64. So that's another... 200 players in total you're looking at about 400 players who would usually be partaking in a, in a grand slam from yeah. the earlier stages or doubles who who no longer have that opportunity to be playing in it so that is going to be or massive. earning not money that, it's all not earning money and I'm, this, there's two elements of it for a start you're looking at the money side of it but then you're looking at also their career and sort of longevity of it and how important points are because we know points are like fundamental for a player yeah they and a lot definitely. of them are gonna, you're just going to make a more of a disparity between the top, say, 128 who actually play in it and the ones who don't. The disparity is going to just, it's going to be create more of a divide. And that's yeah, something yeah. We, we're, we're trying to do. Like in this podcast specifically, we yeah. set up a podcast to try and bridge the gap between that and try and make tennis. People admire the top 500 players. Is there no way the that. Existing top five. Is there no way that they could have done qualifying? In any way, shape, or form. If, if, if they're playing it, you might as well have just done the qualifiers as well, no? Well, this is well. Maybe it's just they're trying to limit the numbers, just to stop any type of like 
possibility there could be any like one infected or something like that but maybe the more people that are there the more staff they have to get in to man events the more doctors the more everyone then there's just more and more people and then it's more and more frowned upon and it probably yeah. wouldn't go ahead yeah that's why it brings to the we had a discussion the other day didn't we whether we thought tennis should go ahead and yeah. i was kind of more on the side that i don't think it should and it seems to me, like, I hate to say it to you, Ben, there's a lot of players who are on my side with the whole thing. They don't want it to really go ahead necessarily. You've got the safety element as well, which you've just mentioned, is high. And it's just, it isn't, I don't know if it's very safe to be honest with you doing that. Um, I wouldn't say it's not safe, but I would say it's just unfair just because I think that they should line up tournaments for everybody. If you're not going to allow... Yeah, you do realise the US is in like a, quite a bad way. Yeah, exactly. I think I think the thing is, it's being held in America, in New York, and we, as we know, that's one of the hardest hit places in the world. Yeah, and, and it's you've like, got... we're getting all this news now from a potential second wave and stuff. But think of all the people who can't thinking... leave, that leave their countries to even be able to enter it. Like we've obviously been speaking with on one of the other podcasts, Ankita Rayner. Yeah. I've heard today that apparently in India they had two thousand deaths in a day, which is. There's no chance that people that she'd be able to fly over, surely. Not just out. there. Look at South Americans as well. So like yeah. Brazil, all around there, really. Argentina, Colombia. Them, I, I can't see them players being able to play. No. There's going to be. That's what I'm saying. They're going to see a lot of players not turn up for it. So we're going to see like a second tier kind of Grand Slam. Or it's American. Grand I love Slam. tennis. We'll be watching it. It'll be something. It'll be good. To, it's tennis back, but I just don't, don't know. It just it's under these circumstances, it doesn't seem right. That sort of takes us to the sort of point. Do you think it was right? Did you see Novak Djokovic's tournament that he was running in Belgrade? <laughs> Wait, nuts! Did you see that? There was yeah, I saw the it. stands were packed. Djokovic's argument is very much is the fact that Serbia has one of the lowest death rates there are. There's not many people transmitting the disease. I think. There was like 50 cases or something a day. It seems to be very low. And that's what his argument for the whole thing is. However, it just seemed like he's living in a different world altogether. I just don't think visually it looks very good. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It's lovely again. See all kids playing. It looked like a brilliant time. I just don't know if it is the correct time to be doing something like that. He's there hugging people. It's like living in a different dimension. Yeah, it's it was, like watching I couldn't believe what I was seeing they played a soccer match before yeah. they're out partying afterwards I look, and the thing is some of these players yeah, they had concerns they were the ones who were saying oh, I've got concerns about playing for the health and safety it doesn't seem like they do to me no it seems like everybody's having a bit of a jolly up over there it's just but, bizarre mate I just don't understand it at all and the funny thing is there's news coming out now that I forget his name exactly but Djokovic the week prior was, I don't know if he went to a basketball match or he met, he met a professional basketball player and he's yeah. now been tested positive yeah. for coronavirus. Exactly. So he was in his company. So imagine if we see now he goes down with it, you'll have team go down with it, Dimitrov, Zverev, Krajinovic. Yeah, all of them. Zverev, that's what I'm yeah. saying. So <laughs> and not just them, it'll be every, about the other 10,000 people there. And then you'll have all the Americans be rubbing their hands together for this tournament to go take place. Mate, we'll see John Isner win. We might have uh, what we were saying to the Wolf about on the episode. All of his boys will be in the semi-finals against each other. Uh, it's not right though, is it though, Ben? There was even saying about, like, do you know the whole problem? I've got a massive problem with like the fans not being there. Like, I feel like you can't really hold a grand slam about the fans because they make up the whole environment. It is what makes it so special. And don't get me wrong, you can you can still hold it, but it's just not right. It doesn't seem doesn't fit, sit well with me. But yeah. so well, they are doing it now without the fans. They were saying that they're going to try and get crowd noises and stuff. <laughs> Come on, that's ridiculous. If they have that, I'm glad they, they must have watched there. I some winner and they put no. That's ridiculous. I suggested that on one of the pods, so maybe they yeah, listen, listen to you. Don't <laughs> I don't think that decision is getting sat. Oh mate, that's a terrible decision. No, but, uh, no, I, I don't. I say decision. It's not been made yet. They're just they're just talk, talking about it. I, but I just think it's uh, it is, it's just going to be bizarre. But it's just going to be like a lot of these other sports. Everyone's gradually trying to come back and stuff. And I think it's just tennis is just another sport 
that doesn't want to feel like it's being left behind and it's just following in the footsteps of everyone else. We've obviously got the horse racing that's on at the moment, which is a very big horse racing event in the UK. And that's going on behind closed doors as well. Had the UFC that's gone behind closed doors. The Premier League's coming back tonight. That's behind closed doors. So I think tennis are just trying to just get the hey. ball rolling a little bit. That's all. Do anything. The USTA want money. It's a money. It's a money machine. That's all it is. The US Open. Everything. They just need. They're just doing it for money. They it's need the, the only fans. purpose. I don't think they care about watching the tennis <laughs> as much as I think. It's not about like thing. It's not about the fans. It's all about they're making money. Which, if they need that to survive, I understand they've been hit really hard with this whole pandemic. But it's at the players' expense. The players don't seem to really want to play. I've seen looking at some, most of them tweeting, and the ones who aren't inside the top hundred who aren't don't live in America don't seem to want to play. It's just like the the, the select few Americans who seem oh this is brilliant. Yeah, right. It makes sense. Is oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not having a dig at them. If I was them as well, I'd be the same. Noah Rubin would be loving it just down the road from him. <laughs> yeah, Might no, able... see Noah Rubin, he had a lot of criticism about the whole I know. <laughs> Djokovic thing as well. Yeah, about the big... Well, obviously, Federer's out of the question now, so no one can say anything about him at the moment. But everyone would probably be watching now to see what Nadal's decision is, whether he... And Djokovic. Uh... We don't know what Djokovic is doing either. Well, you never if know. they both come out and said they're not really too keen on it. But then Djokovic has been doing his own thing over in Serbia, which isn't... If he suddenly decides he's not going to go and play behind closed doors after playing in front of a whole stand full of people, <laughs> it's going to look a little bit weird, isn't it? No, I agree. It's a- <laughs> like, although maybe now he's infected, so maybe he can't go. Just maybe just keep him over there. You don't know. Oh, but gosh. maybe he's just made a terrible decision doing it. You just don't know yet. 14 days' time, we'll find out. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just feel like... I personally feel like they will play and I think Nadal will play as well. As much yeah. as a lot of people online saying they don't think they're going to be playing, da, 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 I just feel like they're not going to miss this opportunity. It's like a, it's a good chance for them to sort of add to their tally. Well, Although, I, think, I don't know. It doesn't, it's never going to be the same. I don't the think... Is, whoever, if, if, one, if one of them get it and it goes, to, it's obviously going to go towards the chase to beat, to get towards Federer's total. I don't think they will. Gonna, every single debate will be oh, they've got that one. Do you remember the coronavirus and it's playing by unclosed doors? And yeah, you know, there's no fans and there's like no team. And there's all I don't think that they will, though. I don't think either of those will win it. If they play in it, mate, they will. I don't think they will. Why not? I think that... Mate, it's been like that for the last yeah, five... Well, yeah, but, there's, but, everyone's, but everyone's been off. Rafa's been very vocal, saying he hasn't even picked up a racket in about three months. Djokovic just went out in the quarterfinals of his own tournament and team has been on a... Warpath, mate. He's been storming it. He won the How tournament. How many times have we seen the same thing over and over again? I remember before Wimbledon, there's always like a few exhibitions here and there. You see Federer go out. They'll go out. Oh, it's a big jolly up. It's a complete different game when you play an exhibition match. Yeah, but they play haven't played for a long it's time. It's completely different from playing an ATP 250 to an ATP Masters. Honestly, these guys, they live for the big occasions. You only see them. You watch them in the Masters and the Grand Slam when they're playing. This is a complete different story, mate. We'll wait and see. If there's no fans there, then who's going to be affected by it? If team might not have no, well, might not have any nerves. There was a funny joke I saw online actually about the making the noise for the, uh, in the stands. <laughs> they were like they should make it realistic. So when Djokovic is serving, they should have booing. <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> when, anyway, whoever Djokovic is playing against is serving or winning a point, they should have cheering. Yeah, but mate, that's true. Why not? Silly. What about when Kyrgios is playing? I don't know. Just throw stuff. <laughs> throw <laughs> stuff at him. <laughs> That'll get him up for it. Why not? He, he won't. Do you reckon he'll play? I don't think Kyrgios will play. I don't know. I, he doesn't really seem that asked about Have it. Have you seen his honest. tweets? He's been tweeting. No, he's, he's fuming, mate. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he, he's, I just don't think he likes this whole change up and everything. I think he just wants everything to go back to normal, then he'll start again. He was very critical today on Twitter about the, the ATP chairman. Not surprised. He's probably been criticised 10 times over by the same guy. Yeah, I think D- Dustin Brown as well is very critical of the whole thing. What do you think? Do you think, uh, do you think Ashley Barty is 
going to be uh, entering. So I, th- I thought I saw that she had uh, written that she wasn't very happy about it either. Probably not. Serena I know, Williams, I know, another I know, Grand Slam. Kavita's not playing. Yeah. Halep's out. She's ruled herself out. Big name. Yeah. It's going to be ridiculous. Coco it? Goff wins the US Open, maybe. No, nah, I think you'll see Kenin, mate. Kenin's got a good chance. Sure. Yeah, Kenin, don't rule her out. She won the Aussie Open. Could be another hard court Grand Slam in 2020. Mate, no, Serena said she's playing as well. But... but still, Serena might be one of her last chances to nick another Grand Slam. So wise for her to do it, I think. Hmm. I don't know. It just doesn't sit really right, does it? It's not really a popular decision. I'm, I'm actually interested to see what will happen. I, one, I just want to see the standard of set, see if these players are actually back to the high level again, because I don't think they will be. And that's why I think it'll be more interesting, because I think you're going to see some massive upsets in it. You'll probably see someone big go out early on to somebody who you yeah, don't I expect. Agree. You always have that. To, you have always have that element, though. I but not, every not I think there's more of that this time though because I think yeah. those players haven't picked up a rat they they're not they're all, everyone's going to be rusty so everyone's going to there's going to be an element of luck on the lower rank guys side I think and if they've been training a little bit more than the bigger guys might see some upsets if we're trying to be positive the one thing I can take from the whole thing is it will be kind of refreshing if we see a slam without Federer and Nadal Djokovic because I want to see, out of that next breed, who is the one who's able to sort of rise to a challenge? We've ne- they've never been able to. They're, they're always in the shadows, aren't they? Always Felix, in the shadows. maybe. Brilliant players. Who's going to be the one out of all of them who's able to sort of... Monfils, maybe. ...in the big moment and actually take it all the way? Because they've got the, they've, they'll be one of the... They'll be, they've got all the chances to. They're clearly one of the best players in the tournament. Well, I think that we'll probably see it'll be between Medvedev team and Titipas, probably. that Those are the three probably standouts that people would probably tip. And then I'd probably chuck in as a little outsider, Monfils, just because of his form early in the year. Yeah, Rublev, it depends maybe? whether these players play, though. Yeah, exactly. You never know. Someone I wouldn't write off either is a gut. Ah, yeah. If he plays... You love him, don't you? <laughs> Always bringing up a cut. <laughs> hey, he's a quality. He's a quality. <laughs> what about he's Andy Murray, him. mate? He's going back on court next week in the Battle of the Brits. Mate, will Andy Murray play in the US Open? If he, if he gets a wild card, maybe. He's playing this next week. Might be... If he wins all his matches, who knows? You never know. They might because just say... Obviously, he can't qualify. So no. Like, they were asked, cause, no, the reason I ask, actually, is I know it's random because he's like ranked so high now and stuff. It's just... I saw an article online saying that Andy Murray is key for the US Open, but I don't understand how he would get in. So what, they're going to offer some wild cards out? Well, he's like one, th- no was he, one so they're going to They're going to already pick some rich player. Oh, he's rich. Where do we get in? He's, he doesn't need the help. He doesn't need promotion. He doesn't need anything. But he's a former champ. He's a former <laughs> US Open champion. So he's got a right to be in the draw. In a, so that's how they sort of hand out wild cards in events a lot of the time if the players can't no, make it there's, there's few criteria what they do for that they do like young prospects someone who would fill a yeah. stadium they'll do players from the home nation yeah and they'll do former winners so yeah you're right yeah exactly but so that's why he fits he ticks that box but i don't know and who wouldn't want to see him go already, but the thing is you're already getting rid of the qualifiers you're already reducing the thing and then all of a sudden you're going to get some other rich guy and play, play him in there yeah, I but know, it's just about, I, like you said, they're going to be trying to make money, aren't they? And if there's no crowd there, the only way to get people to tune in on TV is to get the big boys. If you can get Del Pocho in there as well, you'll get even more eyes on it. Mate, the thing is, Andy Murray, if he was to play, he would actually have a good chance. Not think. Yeah, exactly. Imagine if he like decimates all of these Brits in this uh, little tournament that's going on next week. What, what happens then? If he comes out, like, just win straight sets against yeah. Evans and Edmund and all of the top guys, what then? Does he just suddenly just walk straight in and just start picking people off? The injury disappears. The Murray returns. That's what we all want. 
at the end of the day, this is all on the under the all this talks on the bait on the back of the fact that we don't think Nadal and um, Djokovic going to be playing, right? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I, I think I, I think Nadal will play, but I just wait to see whether Djokovic is eligible to play. I want to see if he tests positive for this coronavirus because he's been. Yeah, mate, it's still like. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I don't she think can't. He's, he's not allowed to play if it happens. Mate, like, I don't think he's got coronavirus. As much you don't as know. Say it. It's a risk. He's taking a stupid risk, and when you're a number one, and you're in the public eye like that, it just doesn't look. It's not a good look. <laughs> the trouble is, like, he missed the, he missed the meeting for it as well. He's, he's, one of their, <laughs> he's the chair of the players' council. Uh, and he missed the, this is the big Zoom meeting with 400 other players. First time in history it's ever happened before. He missed it. Because he's too busy getting drunk with Dominic Team jumping around. Probably chatting to Team didn't turn up for the party. No, nah, Team was practicing, mate. That's what I'm telling you. He's, he's if, doing his overheads. If it happens, he's going to be at leaps and bounds. He ain't stopped training, I bet, since this quarantine happened. Yeah, Team's been in good form as well. Have you seen him? That's yeah, what I mean. I think that he's the only one who's been full on training like it's an actual season still. Everyone else has been putting on a few pounds and not even picking up a racket, just spending time with family. So I think he's the one who's going to be in red hot form going into it. And I don't think if his level is around 90% and others is like 50%, he's just going to be able to get over the line, but wait and see. Yeah, no, I agree. Team's definitely someone who's, who can flourish under this moment. But will the pressure get to him in the big times, like when he's playing someone quite good? Is he could he be playing like a Stan Wawrinka? Stan Wawrinka, eh? What about him? Could Another chance for him. A challenge like that, or not that he obviously is capable ability wise. People probably say better now, but it's like um, the pressure moments. We saw it in the Australian Open with him playing. He just he kind of crumbled a little bit. Granted, this Djokovic. Granted, this Australian Open. He's been two final. two finals, like, two five setters. So he's done all right in the final. He's just had met the two best players on those surfaces. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting to see what happens. For sure. His time. His time will come. I'm sure. But then again, we don't well, know. You got your wish back anyway. You said I want to see tennis in 2020. Here you go. Damn right. They've given it to you. You yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very happy that there's tennis coming back. Don't get me wrong. I'm very unhappy that there's been players mistreated so badly. But, I mean, tennis is going to come back, hopefully, eventually, and all the other smaller tournaments hopefully will give... Something we've not spoke about a lot enough as well, sorry to interrupt, was about the doubles. Yeah. That's going to hit them hard, right? There's already been yeah. people talking in the press... I forget her name now, saying about how they need to cut the pay for, for doubles players, need to get, make less doubles in tournaments. Yeah, what's that about? It's so like, selfish. It's rude, though. It's like it rude. rude yeah. It's no, you're not considering. Doubles is a, is a very, it's a hard discipline in itself, and it shouldn't it's unique. Be, should be frowned upon. That's what I mean. There's, it doesn't get the, they don't get the respect they're due as much as, say, people outside the top 100 don't get the, as, like, they're due either. Yeah. It's just they're another section of the game which is a little bit forgotten about by general like spectators. They don't they they see doubles as more like a fun thing. You're going with not like compet- It's more like exhibition tennis to a lot of mm. people. Like it's actually super competitive, super hard. And there's certain players that are actually like experts at doubles, and they they hone their game into that. Like Jamie Murray, obviously, he's one of them. What's he got? Seven Grand Slam doubles titles and you've got like other people Brian like uh Skupski. yeah exactly and then you've got in the women's game obviously you had like that Sonia Mirza which was uh, the Indian uh, lady yeah. she's got I'm not sure how many grand slams she's got quite a, quite a number of doubles grand slams though it's so it's just these but these doubles players yeah Even Venus Williams Venus Serena yeah exactly but this is what I mean. Like it's, uh, it's, it's it's definitely something, and that's the thing we're going to be missing out on a lot of the doubles pairings. Another thing we're not even touched upon is junior, the juniors. Yeah, no juniors, which is such a big time of the year for all juniors. Really, just trying to get that. That's like a huge accolade to like your junior career if you're able to win one of these, and then it can give you the confidence you need to actually go on to the main tour really. Well, you look at now there's so many top players have come through and done well in juniors 
And yeah. they already could have cemented themselves quite comfortably in the top 300, top 200. Some of them even really high up there. So it just shows like it is an important step in your own, in your own individual personal growth. It's obviously sad as well because we had a few British hopefuls that were in the wheelchair tennis as well. We had Gordon Reed and Alfie Hewitt, which were looking forward to the tournament, and obviously they will now not get to play. Yeah, it's, it's sad across the board, and like especially these groups, like they really rely on a big grand slam like this. So, yeah, exactly. Because we've been interviewing so many players in the past few podcasts, and we haven't done one together. We forgot to say a big thank you to all the fans out there and all of the people watching, everybody on Spotify, on CastBox, YouTube. We've managed to reach a 1,000 subscribers and, well, now even more. So thanks, everybody, for that, everyone's support. Yeah, just to add to that as well, we're actually going to do a 1K video soon. We just not had time to do it. Like we've had a lot of stuff going on with work, and then a lot of players continuously asking to come on. So it's been tricky to sort of fit it in. But we do have like a one k sort of special video. We're just going to talk about like our journey and how it's gone and stuff like that. And then even after that, we'll do a one k tennis match where I'll just smash Ben around the court. <laughs> That's always be a good viewing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. But yeah, yeah, like you said, I think we've talked about everything really. Probably just wrap it up there. Just let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that the US Open should have been held? What do you think about the top players playing? If they don't play, do you think we're gonna? Who do you think is gonna progress from the, from the others? Do you agree with Djokovic running this tournament and having all these fans in the stands? Yeah, whatever. Just let us know your thoughts on anything we've talk, talked about in this video, and we'll be happy to uh, discuss it. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye for now.